Just so, so good. And the best part about this card is when you play it, you get to say, no, I won't let it in like this. What is up, Joe Crew? It is me, Joe Crew DMD, your pirate Shrippum King, and I am here today with a blue, yellow Soul Striker pirate deck profile. How many things can I say that I love in one sentence like that? I don't know if I could fit many more. This is a Soul Striker deck list that I built from scratch. It's got blue and yellow. It's using the new expansion card, which makes it work, and the Zamasu counterplay, which makes it go off. But I'm gonna get into the deck profile. If this is your guys' first time here, you wanna see Shrippums every week, you wanna see deck profiles and wonderful, exciting, fun content, Make sure to smush that subscription button if you're a returning member of the Joe Crew. Welcome back to the Pirate Party. And let's get into this deck profile. All right, so here's the deck box. It's got some great stickers on it from Choto Minute and Super Rose. This is the leader. Of course, have to have my Pirate Queen as my token on the back. But let's get into this profile. So this is the leader here. This is Soul Striker Reborn, Sun Goku. If you guys are unfamiliar with what this does, this is a blue leader. And when he swings on his unawakened side, you can draw a card or you can turn an energy back. Normally, you're going to be drawing a card. You want to get cards. Cards are good. Cards are fun to play. And you don't really need much energy to play with early on. The ways that this guy can awaken is you can awaken when you're at four life or you can awaken when you have a unison specified cost of three and play which is great because you can keep your life high and you can do a lot of fun stuff with a lot of life in this deck and stay alive it's really fun when he awakens he draws two cards and when he is awakened when he attacks he turns back to mono blue energy which is important for this list and he draws a card so really really fun leader you can get a ton of value out of this guy he's been hanging out for a while disclaimer i am making this video before the ban list the ban list is coming out tonight at midnight and this deck profile is coming out in about a week and a half. So there may be some stuff that's hit. There may be some stuff that changes, but that is a disclaimer. There are some things that may be banned by the time this video comes out. And I will do an updated deck list once I modify the deck after the ban list. All right, so very first, we got to run four of the Gogeta SS3 Super Warrior Evolution. This unison is awesome for this deck. Run four, four of these, four of these guys. And basically when you play this unison, it allows you to awaken. This unison is also great because it's a 20K. So it comes out for 20K. And when this unison comes out, you can minus one and play a skillless two drop from your hand. And when you play a skillless two drop from your hand, it's gonna be a sand. And when it's in rest mode, your leader doesn't take damage. The real cheeky thing you can do that works all the time is play this guy, swing with him twice. He's got dual attack. And then you minus one, play your skillless. And you can also bounce things back to your opponent's hand. When your skillless come out and the skillless swings on your next a turn, when the skillless is in rest mode, if it's a sand, your leader won't take damage. So they have to get rid of that skillless first. And a lot of times they'll swing into your leader and then you just get a free swing out of it and say whoops sorry anyway that's a skill is really good because he's a 20k so they have to combo up to get over him 15ks won't hit him uh, also allows you to awaken and gets your skillless on board so we're running four skillless and of course we want to run different skillless because there are four really pretty two drop skillless in the game that are all sands we have trunks beautiful from the newest set uh super sand son goku from set five which is also a great looking parallel foil and Super Saiyan Vegeta, which is a great looking parallel foil from set five as well. And I love this Son Goku parallel foil from this set. I'm definitely gonna be running one of the new skillless parallel foils that is coming out. And we're gonna be making some updates with the new cards that are coming out in the next set, but they are not out yet. So the skillless get played off of your unison. And when you have four energy, when these guys are out in play, you can tap four energy and play Gohan. Gohan is awesome. This card is so good. This is basically like the new height of mastery. And the way this works is you can activate main, pay four energy, choose one of your two energy skillless cards, put it in your energy area and play this guy. And what he does is he has deflect, so he can't be counterplayed. He has triple strike and he's basically a dual attacker. And the way in which he's a dual attacker is really interesting. So he swings for triple strike. And then once he swings, you can choose a blue battle card in your energy, place it in your drop area, stand him up and choose all your opponent's battle cards and send them to the bottom of your owner's deck. So you can clear the board with this guy. And what's really cool about him is he doesn't have to be in rest mode to use that skill. So if you're worried that your opponent is going to negate his skills or KO him or negate him and get off the board or do something like that, you can pressure their board before you choose to use his skill, which sometimes is the bigger brain move. But we're just running two of those guys. There isn't too much space in the deck, but we usually see him and he's a great finisher and a great option for board removal. The other unison we're 
we're running is just two of these baby unisons. And the reason why I'm running two baby unisons is because it's just here to awaken. If you have a specified three unison, these will get replaced with Tapion because the, the good thing on this is the draw. The minus five isn't really used in this deck. It is a great skill, but it doesn't find utility in this deck. Really the good thing is the plus two draw, but when Tapion comes out, he's a 19K and he has a plus two draw. So he's definitely gonna take this baby's place and we'll probably be running three of them. Three counters, of course, Trunks God Ceiling, one of the best free counters in the game. This card's just insane. When your opponent plays a card, you can counter play counter window one and the card just won't hit the board. As long as it doesn't have to flex, this hits pretty much anything. Really, really strong card. And you pretty much always have a unison live on this on this deck because your unison is your awakening win condition. And even if you're at awakening range, you're still gonna play a unison turn three to set yourself up for your free counters and to protect your leader if you have that sand out to protect your leader from damage. We're running a kind of unique super combo split. So we're playing one Vegeta Discipline Warrior. Now the super combo is really good. It's good for drawing. You can choose one card in your hand, place at the bottom of your deck and draw two cards. So it's really good for getting rid of dead cards like unisons. If you have a unison in your hand, you're not gonna play. You can bottom deck it and draw two. Just good, but we're just running one, so at four. We're running two Zeno Edge of Space. And the reason why we're running two Zeno Edge of Space is because this card is so good in this deck. There's a lot of stuff that comes in and out of your energy and we're gonna get into that. So being able to interact with your energy and the fact that you can use it as five life and you're doing it defensively, all just synergizes really, really well for the deck. So we're running two Zeno Edge of Space and then one Zamasu Sacred Disbelief. Now this card is just really good looking. It's spicy. You can tap people's leaders. You can tap battle cards. It also gives you fodder for your arrival, which we're gonna get into, but this card is really excellent. Just running one. It's so gorgeous and it's blue and yellow and I love blue and yellow. All right, let's get into the pirate package. So we're running four Galactic Buster. Now Galactic Buster is an insane card. And now what Galactic Buster does is defensively, you can activate battle, play Galactic Buster, which draws you a card first. And then it's gonna take a 1K mono blue battle card from your energy area, put it in your combo area, and then this goes into your energy area. So it essentially ramps itself on defense. You can only use it once per turn. But what's really good about it is it's gonna get your pirates out and we have a lot of draw power off of this card. And we also have the ability to board control off of the other card that plays off of this, but we'll get into that. So basically the pirates that we're playing, we're playing four Zangia the Evildoer. Now this card is just really good because it just draws you. And this is gonna be your dedicated energy charge. So you're gonna put this in your energy. You're gonna play Galactic Buster. You draw off Galactic Buster, you draw off this card. So you're basically drawing two cards for having this card in your energy and you're still going through the game sequencing. So it's really, really value. She also comes in useful later in game. If you have more energy than you need and she's in your energy, you can actually Galactic Buster offensively, draw off Galactic Buster, draw off Zangia, but you're not gonna be replacing that energy when you use it offensively. It's really just for late game push if you need it. Other pirate we're playing is Bojack the Evildoer. This card is insane. This card, basically, you play it out into your combo area. You're gonna put it in your energy area. This, these, And what's nice is having these pirates, you know these pirates are going to go in your energy. So you put Bojack the Evil Doer in your energy. Defensively, you Galactic Buster. Galactic Buster will pull Bojack out of your energy area, put him in your combo area. Galactic Buster will go into your energy area. And then at the end of battle, you tap to energy and you can play Bojack from your drop area, which you can resolve before Galactic Buster resolves. So Galactic Buster has a part of its skill where it says at the end of battle, tap one of your energy. But if your energy is already tapped, you can't tap for Galactic Buster and you get a window to tap to play this card before Galactic Buster wants to resolve. So this essentially is a two energy play. It's a 20K dual attack and it bottom decks any threat. Obviously not ignoring barrier, but just a really, really strong card. But you have to remember it happens at the end of battle. So if somebody's swinging in, you can't just get rid of whatever they're swinging with during the battle. Now the blue yellow pirate. So this is Bojack Pinpoint Onslaught. And this card is so rad. This came out in the expansion. And what's really cool about this card is you can play it in active mode, ignoring energy exhaust in your energy on a turn if you have a Bojack's Brigade in your energy. So your Bojack and your Zangia are gonna be your targets. You wanna charge them turn one and turn two. Now turn one, when you charge Zangia, turn two, you can turn charge Bojack, or if you have Pinpoint Onslaught, you can get Pinpoint Onslaught in your energy because you're likely gonna Galactic Buster your Bojack or your Zangia out of your energy. But you really only need one of these Pinpoint Onslaughts. And what I, the other thing that's really cool about this Pinpoint Onslaught is it's useful for your Aegis, which we'll get to. It also can be played through an activate battle if you have two 
blue and or yellow battle cards in your combo area. So what's cool about that is Galactic Buster is always gonna be pulling cards into your combo area. So all you need is you need to pull one other card into your combo area, and then you can tap a blue or a yellow energy and play this guy. And when he's in play, he's gonna give all your Bojack's Brigade 5K more. So your Bojack the Evildoer is gonna be swinging 25K dual attack instead of the 20K dual attack, which is pretty, pretty strong. The other thing is this guy creates an evolution target for Bojack on a Rampage. Bojack on a Rampage is a very strong card. It is relatively relatively easy to remove, but once you get this guy out, if you evolve him, you he will reduce the evolution cost by one. So you only need to pay four to evolve him, and he draws two cards when he evolves, which is very strong. Then he's a 30k dual attack double strike. And when this card is in rest mode, your opponent has to rest an energy when they swing with a battle card, and you get to untap an energy when they swing with a battle card. So he has a lot of utility. Just running one, he's kind of like the third Gohan, basically, but he's a target on the pirate stuff. For our arrival package, we're running three Bojack, Bojack Violent Rush. Violent Rush Bojack is, is really good. He comes in for one energy and there's a lot of instances in this deck where you're going to have a blue and yellow in your combo area. You have a lot of energy to play with and you can tap energy because when you tap energy, you can still Galactic Buster it out and still get use out of it. So tapping for your arrival isn't really that big of a deal. And Bojack is also going to give you Aegis, which lets you untap to blue and or yellow energy and draw a card. So really, really good defensively. It's kind of safe tapping out in this deck because you can Zeno Super Combo get an energy back use your arrival to play bojack violent rush there's just there's a lot of cool techie stuff you can do in here and this guy is just really good defensively he's also a 20k body to swing with and he has barrier so he's very difficult to get rid of now for the real spice this card is insane this card is so nuts it's the only card that counters unisons back to hand right now this card you pay two energy for it and you can send a unison back to hand or anything for or less without deflect you just pay to play him they have to take the card back to their hand you get to rest one of their cards and you get to draw a card rest a battle card but still three things that are super strong for two energy and to get your arrival on board because he is blue yellow so say you have a zangia and your energy you can tap the zangia during your combo step combo him galactic buster your zangia out of your energy draw off Galactic Buster, draw off Zangia, replace your energy with Galactic Buster, be in an energy back to get your blue yellow back, play your arrival. And there's just a lot of really, really cool stuff you can do with this deck. It's very, very versatile. Now just for the basic, you know, useful blue stuff, playing three beans. I have a feeling beans gonna ha have a limit or an errata or something, and I don't like relying on it, but it is a very useful card defensively, especially in this deck. So I'm running three of them. I don't use it offensively that much. Sometimes I do need that last energy to get back for Gohan, and I will use a bean in that instance but i try to use one defensively and save them as much as possible because you don't want to get baited into using a bean because it's so helpful to keep your leader at 5k more or keep a battle card at 5k more that they're trying to ko by swinging dimension magics i'm running two and the reason why i'm running two is you really don't negate too much in this deck because there's so much that happens in your combo step you don't want to be removing those combo steps but sometimes you absolutely need negate so i find that two dimension magics is good for our negate split and then i'm running one of the evolution booster chill army rune Force. This card's great to protect your unison, especially if you're a five life, you can just take that last life, play this card, play your token. And a lot of times I'll go in with my token and swing with it if I'm going in for them on the clap back. And it's just great to protect your unison. Really nice at one. I don't think more is necessary. I have one more on my sideboard if I need it. Of course, Great Ape Son Goku, Saiyan Instincts. This card's awesome. It gives you your arrival. It draws you cards. It gives you combo power to play the Bojack Pinpoint Onslaught. So just really, really useful card. There's lots of different things you can do with it in the deck. Definitely a gorgeous card and these are from the special anniversary box so basically when this card's in your drop area you can tap two energy send it to your warp and draw two cards i'm playing one android 17 turning the tide these games often go long and i often won't use gohan skill so i will get to turn seven on turn six and if you can play android 17 turning the tide on turn six just really really strong option to send your opponent's hand back to their deck and then just kind of pressure them down with critical swings and your board that you've built over the course of the game and of course the best secret rare in the game right now supreme kai of time space time unraveler i just don't think that there's a better secret rare in the game i know most people that are playing blue are playing hatch but i think the secret rare is better to be able to get rid of unisons and to be able to clear people's boards and stop unison and leader card swings there's just a lot more utility to supreme kai of time than baby hatch i think and two energy and soul striker is basically free because you're turning two back every turn so she's essentially a free play in my head in this deck um, and it's just a really really strong secret rare and people also don't expect it they're expecting you to play hatch so they will play around hatch when in reality you really have this and you can just win games with it and the last card in the deck is the best card in the game super sand for bardock fighting against fate i've been saying it since the day this card was printed this is the 
best card in the game in my opinion it is a free play extender 25k dual attack free overrealm just so so good and the best part about this card is when you play it you get to say no i won't let it in like this and then you just win the game and it feels really good to be able to say a phrase like that that bardock says and you know just get the game um such a good looking card such a cool card and it's free you just play it for free just overrealm and by the time you're playing this it's going to be easy to overrealm and you just have a lot of pressure to put on so that's been the deck profile i hope you guys have enjoyed it uh, I love playing this deck. I'm definitely going to continue tweaking it, modifying based on what happens in the ban list. I'm sure there's going to be changes that are made. The next set that's coming out, the Tapion cards, the Unison and the Battle card, that's a double striker that comes out for two. Both look like really, really good cards for this deck. And I'm really excited to put them in here. They're definitely going to take the spot of the baby Unisons and maybe another couple cards. Um, I don't know exactly where I'll make room for them, but I'm definitely going to be making room for them, especially because they're SBRs. I could just make the deck shinier. Uh, there are a bunch of things in the side deck. I think the most important thing in the side deck is the Gohan blocker. That's a one energy play and he removes something three or less ignoring barrier. Just good for stuff like invoker or other options like that just to clear out, you know, drums or just board removal for a barrier. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this deck profile. I am Joku DMD. Thank you for making me your pirate king. It is my true honor to be Shrimp and Pirate King. If this is your guys' first time here and you want to see this stuff every week, make sure to smush that subscription button if you're a returning member of the Joku. Thanks for coming by. I hope you enjoyed this blue yellow deck list and supreme kai of time space time and Raveler says thank you yosha oh my god though i almost forgot i am a dentist i can't end the episode without doing a dental tooth tip so for our dental tooth tip today guys i just want to talk to you a little bit about whitening a lot of people are interested in whitening and bleaching their teeth it's totally okay to do that but if you are going to whiten your teeth you have to realize that it's something that you're going to have to maintain for the rest of your life you can't just whiten your teeth and be done with it whitening needs to be maintained and if you don't maintain it you can actually end up making your teeth darker another thing that you can expect with all whitening protocols is that you're going to increase your tooth sensitivity so if you are going to be whitening your teeth make sure to be using a toothpaste like sensodyne or pronamel or something that's going to strengthen your enamel health so that you will reduce the potential for sensitivity when you are going through your whitening i do recommend opalescence if you are going to be doing a whitening course and i do recommend doing at home whitening versus in office whitening as the long-term effect is usually more long-standing and you can maintain it a little better on your own but if you are going to a wedding or something like that and you need to get your teeth whitened in the snap definitely in-office whitening is a great option and if you're going to maintain your in-office whitening with at-home whitening that's a great option also i'm joku dmd this has been dental tooth tip and i'll see you guys oh god are you okay? <laughs>